Okay, hello everybody watching. Thanks for tuning in. I'm here today with Robert Chatfield, who is the British Council Argentina director. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, remote work and teacher well-being um, with an emphasis on mental health. Robert, thank you for being here. Not at all. Thank you for inviting me. Could you please uh, briefly tell us about your background in connection to the subject we'll be discussing? Sure. Um, I mean, I, I have a sort of personal interest in, in the subject, if you like, because um, uh, I've sort of all my life suffered a little bit from, I mean, I think we all have anxiety at some point, right? But I've, I've um, suffered from it on a sort of medical uh, basis. And um, I've also for a long time studied things like mindfulness and meditation. And then back in the 1990s, I traveled to India and spent quite a long time uh, up in the north of India, um, living with uh, Tibetan monks. I was teaching them English and they were teaching me how to meditate. So um, so that's my sort of, I guess, my background in it. But in, in 2016, so relatively recently, I had a, a total burnout uh, due to, to work pressure. Um, so obviously links to what we're talking about today and had a, a mixture of, you know, very severe um insomnia and anxiety and, and depression which is which is not something i would i would wish on on anybody um and i obviously had to overcome this with medical support with my you know my family but also things like mindfulness and making changes to my to my life and the way um i was trying to think about things um and i also found things very hard during the pandemic um i think we all did didn't we it wasn't quite just me or anything but um i think and it was the sense of sort of of isolation linked to sort of being remote to everybody. So that 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 kind of is my background and my interest in in all of this. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that. And it's so important to be able to talk about these things. Um, so, well, especially during the pandemic, the World Health Organization was warning about the risks of telework for, for mental and physical being and well-being of, of workers. Um, what are the added risks of remote work? Um, okay, I think I think there's a sort of there's a good list of them. I think the first one is we've just mentioned, and I think what you've just said is interesting. It is important that people are open about the things that they're struggling with. You know, there was an old statistic that said that thirty percent of people will have a mental health issue in their lifetime. Wow. Uh, my my theory on that is that seventy percent of people are not being honest because it's a bit like <laughs> saying. You know, I never have a health issue. So of course we do. We all have health issues. So we also all have minds and uh, our, our, our brains. We have about 60,000 thoughts a day and apparently about 40,000 of them are negative. So, you know, having this become a problem is, is not unusual. Um, but in terms of the World Health Organization and, and, and the risks, I think obviously isolation and loneliness for me, that's a, that's a, a big one. Um, you know, if you're getting up in your 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 flat or your house and you're you're working there all day and maybe you're you're by yourself even though you have conversations with people on on zoom or teams or whatever it is it's not the same having the human contact and i think it you know it leads to another um risk which is um i think when we all work remotely from each other in the, in the british council we work with colleagues from around the world having non face-to-face -face communication i mean video is better than nothing but when we start dealing with stuff by by email or or whatever it's very easy for people to get up you know offended or upset they get an email that really oh, that's a horrible email and probably the person sending it um didn't mean that and i've i've personally intervened in many cases when two people have had what i call email tennis mm -hmm. when they're sort of firing things back to each other and it gets sort of you know the communication gets worse and worse so i think communication is an, is another risk of, of that breaking down and causing stress yeah. um the lack of work-life balance is another one and i think that's because we get up um and then you know as i often do i get up and i grab my phone and i check my email and it's seven o'clock in the morning that's not it's not that's not sensible um and we also i think when i work at home i find it difficult when to say stop so that that difficulty in, in in balance and promoting your own well-being becomes more of a challenge and it's, it shouldn't be because you think actually the person who's responsible for that is you um but often we're not very good at managing ourselves are we so that's the sort of thing um 
there are other things like security risks having you know if you're working on your own computer you know you might be more at risk but i mean that's that's outside of this sort of topic um so yeah those those are i think are the main ones to be honest yeah definitely well um um a lot of teachers experience burnout and and this seems yeah. to be even more pronounced in remote working environments you were just mentioning you've experienced burnout yourselves yeah um so the question is what can managers do to help prevent that right managers um I, i'm okay i'll talk a bit about what managers can do but also there's a link to what what teachers themselves can do I and mean, when i worked as a teacher for 12 years uh and i definitely i it wasn't called burnout then because it was you know 25 years ago but um i definitely definitely had it um so i think as a manager you've got to recognize the signs so when people are seemingly detached from work or they're sort of excessively emotional I and mean, then you know teachers staff rooms can be quite you know emotional places that you know we're, we're human beings and maybe you've had a terrible class or you've had a terrible observation you, you know you, you would you would sometimes find people in you know in tears and, and and so on so as managers you've got to make sure you're you're checking in with with your colleagues and making sure that they're okay so poor performance uh people being excessively tired that doesn't seem to improve when they've rested and then you know what can managers actually do um i think it's you know being empathetic as a manager uh, you know is important but it's also important to empower people to take control of their own well-being and their lives when we're, we're not very good at this you know i mean you know uh I, i sort of think sometimes it's unacceptable that i'm overweight and it's like well i'm overweight because i eat too much <laughs> so i need to i need to eat less it's like a simple thing it's I, i'm in control no, nobody it's no one else's fault right um so i think too often as managers um we can enter into sort of parent child relationships with our staff and you know sometimes you hear staff and i hear it at work here people saying i haven't eaten anything for lunch i've got no time and i always challenge people with that and say okay you know people say i yesterday i worked until 11 p.m so i say okay why what are you working on that can't wait until tomorrow why are you not arranging your day and and you help people with planning you help them to organize themselves because what you don't want in a in a culture in a, in a in an office and this doesn't exist this thing it's called the martyr mentality of the sort of yay it's great that i'm working so hard and i'm so burnt out and you know people people sometimes i've you know i've seen organizational cultures where people are always proud of how sort of exhausted they are it's a competitive thing that's unacceptable and managers do need to intervene uh when they see that um and you know you need to i think create a positive working environment i think you know i've experienced it myself in in my career and i've i've seen it in others um that sometimes you know a staff room or a, or a, or a school or whatever can be a fiercely political environment there are various different sort of groups and factions and cliques and stuff so i think as managers it's and i'm i'm managing that one but you know run the british council so it's our responsibility to make sure that that kind of thing doesn't happen and i say that i had someone leave you know a couple of years ago and when i spoke to her about why she was leaving she said that it, she felt that her direct line manager was mistreating her and she was unhappy so what really struck me was that was that you know why was it that i had not been informed of that why was it that, that someone didn't feel they could go past and talk to me and say that this is how i feel so you know creating those channels of communication as a manager within your own team uh making sure that you know it's difficult because people don't want to bypass line management but you've got to you've got to be looking if you're a senior manager you've got to be looking at everybody who's in your team and making sure that they're okay that in itself takes time but you've got to make that time so that's what i think about that one thank you and now from from the point of view of teachers um and you were just mentioning this thing that that it it in remote work it's easy to blur the lines between the personal life and work life yeah. what can teachers do to try to keep a healthy balance right yeah that's a difficult one i mean i can imagine a lot of teachers will probably listen to what i'm going to say now and think you know uh, that's so obvious so i've tried that but let, let's let's um let's have a go at some things and i think the thing with some of these things is what you got to do is ask yourself do you do these things because it, if it's it's all very well if you want to say well what he's saying is really obvious but if you don't do them 
then it's probably one of the reasons you might feel burnt out. So, I mean, the first thing I, you know, I do every week, and I would recommend this for anyone, whether it's a teacher or, or, or anyone else in the job, is, is I plan my week and I plan my days. And I also plan not only the work I'm going to do, but the time when I'm not going to be working. And I stick to it and I put it on an Excel on a Monday. And, you know, if it's, you know, when as it is tomorrow afternoon, I have my guitar class. Nothing is getting in the way of that. It's, I have a guitar class at 6 p.m. Uh, my teacher is very demanding, gives me lots of homework. So, I, you know, I'm going to do that because it's something that's good for my, my mental well-being. Um, and then on Thursday uh, at, at 5 p.m., I'm going cycling uh, to the track and um, you wouldn't think it to look at me, but I, I, I have a, a road bike and I sort of go and do 30 kilometers on a, on a cycling track. Um, so once you've planned your week, you've then got a review at the end of the day. So how many times did you have a break? Did you stick to the things that you said? Did you stick to taking some time for lunch? Did you sit and have your lunch looking at your computer? Because if you did, you're getting the balance wrong. And so what you've got to do is, is, you know, look at your how you how you've scheduled things for yourselves. And it may be you don't get to do that. Maybe your, your, your employer does that. But you've got to push back. If, if someone says give you eight one hour classes back to back, you've got to push back and ask for a gap in the middle of that. Um, you've also got to look at and analyzing your thoughts. Now, there's a. Uh, you know, what negative thoughts are you having during the day about work that are causing you you stress? And I think it's also then looking at the thought distortions. This is something I've studied a lot in terms of, you know, um, the sort of cognitive behavioral um, thinking is, you know, are you catastrophizing your thoughts? Like you gave a bad class, so you're a terrible teacher and it's all awful, you know. Is it an all or nothing sort of thought? Is it emotional reasoning? Because often when we feel things, we think that they're true, and that's not the case. Sometimes we just, it's just a feeling. Um, do we magnify the negative and minimize the positive? Do we jump to conclusions? Like, you know, I just had a, a an observation that didn't go very well, therefore I'm not going to get a promotion. Um, one of the things that I, I, I've seen many times, and I've done it myself, is what we call mind reading, which is when you make a judgment about what someone else thinks about you or your work, with no evidence at all, just from the way that they're looking. And it might be that they're thinking, oh God, did I leave the gas on? Uh, you know, <laughs> or, or did I forget to turn off the air conditioning? And so they're sort of looking like this, with nothing to do with you at all. So if you're having thoughts like those, and if you're having thoughts that are negative, which is often happens when you're in the sort of burnout level, you've got to be able to challenge the thoughts. And what I, what I do with mine, because I have them, you know, is I write them down. And I then challenged them and I challenged them imagining that I was giving advice to a friend. If a friend said to me, you know, uh, you know, I mean, you, you maybe have something stupid like you're in your flat and you can't find your keys. So you suddenly think, well, I'm, I'm never going to be able to leave the flat because I haven't got my keys and that's it. And you, well, you know perfectly well the keys are in the flat because you came into the flat. So you've got to sit down and say, right, OK. The advice is you will find the keys. You just need to calm down and stop thinking about this and, and getting yourself kind of worked up. So managing your thoughts is, is a really difficult thing because our thoughts are the things that uh, lead us to burnout, that lead us to mental health issues, to anxiety, depression. You know, I, I, when I studied in India, this, you know, the, one of the, 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 the people who was teaching me said, look, uh, Depression is having negative thoughts and ruminating about the past. Anxiety is about worrying about the future. If, if you can only just stay in the present moment, you won't have those things. So just focus on what you're doing now and what you have today. Very difficult to do, but we try and do that. And that's what mindfulness tries to achieve. Um, and it's something that, again, another bit of reading if people are interested um, Marcus Aurelius, um, the last emperor of Rome, wrote a book called Meditations, and he's the sort of father of Stoicism. And what he said was that we can only control our thoughts, and that's difficult, right? Our reactions and our attitude. So if you can only control those things, you think about how much stress we have in life thinking that we can control other things. We can control our co-workers, we can control the people who work for us, we can control our children we can control our you know and we can't that's the reality 
So also trying to be too much in control is something that can lead to stress. Um, and also, I think one of the things that can help when you, you know, for anybody, but also when you're burning out is get a piece of paper, write down the, you know, the days of the week on it and ask yourself, how many days of the week did you do something nice for yourself? And if the answer is not very many of those days or maybe one, then you need to think again and you need to try and treat yourself a bit more kindly, because that's one of the things with burnout is when we're not actually being kind to ourselves. There you go. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That's a, a lot of very practical advice. It's really easy to, to, to well, not that easy, but then <laughs> very practical. So it's, it's, it's doable, let's say. Um, so do you have any other recommendations in terms of teacher well-being in general? Sure. I would say, I mean, change your surroundings. So don't sit in the same place every day. Um, do a class you know I, I sometimes have meetings and I have a like a chest a piece of furniture and I put the laptop up there and have a, an hour when I'm standing up um, I go in the kitchen go in the in the in the bedroom or whatever um, I mean one of the things I do to reduce stress and it may sound silly is I keep the tv on in my room with the volume down but I don't have anything as horrible as the news on because the news I live in Argentina unfortunately the news isn't very happy at the moment so I have like a an aquarium with with fish or undersea scenes of fish swimming around. Um, but what I've actually been watching recently and just having it on the background is there's a live feed from the International Space Station. And I have that on because it just kind of reminds you how beautiful the world is um, and how amazing it is that this thing can go around the world in, in sort of, you know, an hour and a half or something. Um, and in terms of well-being, I would also recommend if you don't meditate or do mindfulness, and they are slightly different things, meditation is is all about sort of you know suppressing your uh, you know your, your yourself and and you know internal focus whereas mindfulness you can do all sorts of things mindfully it's about focusing on the thing that you're doing it's a it's a period of focus um use guided meditations it's very difficult if you want to start meditating or or, or being mindful just to do it you know, it's like anything if you just wanted to talk about my guitar class you just wanted to play the guitar from nothing and you didn't have a teacher how you, you're not it's very difficult so there's a great channel on youtube uh, in english called the mindful movement um i really recommend uh, those there's another one uh, a, a guy called michael seeley um who has his own youtube channel and you can do guided meditations anything from 10 minutes through to an hour so i mean again people often say i don't have time but if you don't have 10 minutes in a day i'm sure you do i'm sure if you look at your smartphone and you look at how many hours you've actually looked at it during the day you'll find you've got 10 minutes so i think that's those are the other recommendations uh, that i would have uh, exercise if you're if you're feeling burnt out uh, and again i know it's difficult because when you get into a, a, a vicious circle of, of, of burnout and feeling very stressed the last thing you want to do is to go out for a run or go swimming or something exercise has been proven to reduce the symptoms of stress, uh, anxiety, and depression. It's just proven because when you when you exercise, you release adrenaline and then you release endorphins and then you feel better. Um, so if you exercise, you will sleep better. And if you sleep better, you will feel better. So that's it. Thank you so much for all of those recommendations. Do you have anything else to say about this subject? Um, not really. No, I think, look, just be kind to yourself. And that's the, the first the first rule. That it's, you know, because actually I do. Um, I saw a, a talk on this uh, once on, about a guy um, on, I think it was a TED talk, actually, talking about depression and, and, and anxiety. And what he said really, really rang true for me. Um, basically, what he said was um, depression is a club that anyone can join. But once you've joined, it will make you feel like you're the only member. And that is absolutely true. With any mental health issue, you will feel like you're the only one in the world that has it. And, and whilst it's OK, you need to realize that you're not, that most most of us have, to some extent, issues with, with their mental health. Um, that, and, and we all need to manage our mental health as we do our physical health. So do not feel that you're alone and get help. You know, you need either the most 
most countries of wherever you're watching this, there will be organizations that you can contact, obviously through your healthcare providers or whatever it is. Um, but my advice to people would be to, to, to reach out and get help before it becomes a serious issue. Um, now that may be difficult and it may involve money, um, but again, is you know your 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 health or your well being is something that you should be prepared to invest in. So, yeah, that's my advice. Thanks so much, uh, Robert. Um, I feel that I I I was thinking about so many people and teachers that I know while I was listening to you. I'm sure it will resonate a lot with with that, our, our audience. Um, so really, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Good luck, everybody. Be well.